Let me start with a self-introduction. I did my math PhD at UC Berkeley. I finished in two years, which makes me the fastest person to finish a PhD in the history of Berkeley. Uh, during my PhD, I was doing topology and hyperbolic geometry. Uh, this, is, this gave me the idea of the name of my future company, Hyperbolic. And uh, before that, I graduated from Peking University with the highest honor, student of the year. I won a few gold medals in various mathematical competitions. Uh, and after graduation, I work at Citadel Securities and App Labs before founding Hyperbolic Labs. Uh, my co-founder, Yuchen, has an uh, expertise in AI. He graduated from University of Washington with a PhD in CS, especially uh, AI systems and uh, networking. And after that, he was working at an AI company, building an open source AI compiler called Apache TDM. Uh, and we finally have a Labs 20, uh, 2022 and have raised a few rounds and uh, keep moving the, uh, the limit of open source AI. We have a team of, uh, we have like a strong advisors group. Uh, there are uh, co-founders of Data Bricks, uh, Reno Singh, and also a few professors from UC Berkeley, Columbia, and Hong Kong universities. Um, so our mission is that we want to build an open source AI ecosystem economy. Um, we believe that AI is uh, the most powerful tools known to the mankind. Uh, currently, uh, AI is like is already integrated with most uh, important systems, and in the future, it will be further integrated. For example, transportation, social media, finance, vehicles, uh, robotics, and even your brains. And currently, in the centralized ecosystems, there's no way for you to participate in controlling this advanced technology, neither let you uh, own and participate in the revenue sharing opportunities. And so, at Hyperbolic, we want to build an open AI ecosystem and economy of the people, by the people, for the people, where AI infrastructure, services, and models are accessible to all of you, and it can be governed and contributed by all of you and benefit all of you. Um, so a lot of people have shared the same mission with us, and we're glad to see more and more open source and web free AI projects working in this field. Um, however, we see uh, there is a biggest problem uh, in order to achieve that dream, which is we need real, robust, decentralized infrastructure. So uh, the first step that we're building is that we try to build this uh, decentralized AI cloud to enable open access to AI, and we're solving three major challenges. Uh, the first one is that uh, we want to build a decentralized orchestration layer to aggregate global GPUs, and also we want to build AI services that can leverage the uh, power of it. And so the first part is, uh, we call it hyperbolic decentralized operation system. So as long as you have a machine or a cluster, and once you install this uh, HyperDOS, uh, your machine will be seamlessly integrated with our network, and it will allow users on the demand side to uh, easily uh, access the compute and orchestrate all the com global compute. Uh, we already launched our uh, limited alpha version uh, a month ago, and we're currently doing web, uh, like testing with um, invited users and also our supplier partners, uh, including Web2 data centers like Lambda Crusoe, uh, Web3 data centers like Foundry, Xtreme Cloud, and also uh, GPU tokenization project like uh, Aether, Xbits, uh, and Gabe and Compute Labs. Um, so uh, if you are interested in uh, accessing the compute, uh, reach out to me after the talk and we can give you like, access to the limited alpha version. Um, and on top of that, we think that what people really want are actually not just compute, they actually want services and models. And so, uh, as the first party, we try to build this AI services layer, allow developers to deploy different AI services, leveraging the global computer that we have. Uh, so we first build this uh, AI infrastructure service uh, to host uh, state-of-the-art open source AI models, uh, leveraging the decentralized compute on network. Uh, we call it hyperbolic compiling service, which can compile different high-level uh, machine learning language, like PyTorch, TensorFlow, JAX, into different uh, low-level hardware language like CUDA for NVIDIA, Rocket for AMD, Metal for Apple, etc. And we're currently uh, working with AMD together to push the limit of the AMD chips. And uh, on the right-hand side is like some comparison uh, of the performance between our uh, solutions and another uh, widely adopted serving framework for our apps on AMDs. 
we launched our service uh, four months ago and has been adopted not only by Web3 AI projects, but also uh, Web2 AI developers. Uh, we're currently trying to build our AI community because we think the biggest problem for Web3 and uh, decentralized AI is that uh, we need to get adopted by Web2 people and we build like this uh, like very friendly uh, user experience uh, UI UX and uh, we currently see more and more AI developers uh, using our products. Um, and uh, some people have the question that like if we build uh, we build a decentralized solution, we actually uh, like harm the performance or reliability of uh, the services. And our answer is that we actually can deliver comparable performance to centralized solutions. And this is why uh, Web2 people really like us. And we'll, in the future, we'll keep uh, trying to build comparable performance. But then in the meantime, we'll also unlock some actual functionalities powered by blockchain and Web3. The second goal that we're trying to solve is that uh, in a decentralized network, how do you make sure that the results generated by a random node is actually correct? Uh, and this is called like security and verifiability. Uh, people mention about using consensus, which is like voting. You ask uh, several nodes to run the same request and then ask them to vote on their answers and see which one gets the majority vote. Uh, and then, but however, this has like a huge overhead. If you ask 10 nodes to run the same request, it, it means like 10x overhead. Uh, and then people also say we can use OPML, which is like using optimistic mechanism and fraud proof to uh, verify the result. So it means that you usually some of you ask a node to generate the result, but then you will wait for seven days, uh, which is called a challenge window, allow other people to challenge the result. But this doesn't give you great finality. So as a user, if I ask, uh, uh, AI model, what is the weather today, or like, uh, what, like, what can I do in Singapore? And then after seven days, I finally know that the answer is actually correct, but I already leave Singapore and I'm in, back in New York. Um, so like, I don't think this is very practical for uh, daily, daily usage of my AI. Uh, and then uh, Z zero knowledge proof, everyone knows uh, ZK doesn't uh, math down the line. So once you generate the proof, uh, you can actually verify it uh, with a 100% uh, frankness guarantee. But uh, however, uh, the computational overhead is even higher. Uh, it's currently like 100x overhead, and uh, we think uh, ZK probably will get there with uh, like in the next five years, but currently uh, it's not useful at the moment. Um, so what we invented is that uh, we propose another new verification mechanism. We call it proof of sampling. This is a new verification mechanism uh, invented by our team and also our advisors, uh, Professor Raluca Papa from uh, UC Berkeley and Professor Siam Mohalami from Columbia. Uh, it's a sampling-based verification mechanism. So instead of challenging all the results, uh, they only check a certain portion of the results. So most of the cases, uh, only one uh, node we call a server will generate the result. But then with a certain chance, uh, the network will ask another node uh, to regenerate the result. And once we receive the two results, we'll compare the results. And if the results are different, uh, it will initiate an arbitration process, and after the arbitration process, the dishonest node will be punished with a high amount of penalty. And we can use math to prove that depending on the stake, uh, slashing amount, and a reward, uh, you can actually derive a formula for the threshold such that uh, as long as the chance of checking is higher than that threshold, the system has a pure strategy in that equivalent. This means that everyone in the node will behave 100% honestly if they are rational and try to maximize their own benefit. Um, and we, we think potential of this verification mechanism because just like uh, fraud proof and ZK, uh, proof of sampling is not only useful for uh, AI inference, it's actually useful for many other services. So including AI chaining, AI fine tuning, and some services outside of AI, let's say like how to roll up and also data availability. So we're trying to build this as a generalized ABS. Uh, we're working with uh, Angular, Karak, Exocore, and a few other mistaking protocols. Together, we'll build this like, generalized ABS so that other ABS uh, service builders can utilize our verification mechanism to secure their own services. And the last goal we're trying to solve is uh, privacy. Everyone knows like, uh, you, you have the freedom of speech and you want to protect uh, your own data. 
And uh, like there are many, many different ways to solve this. And the most practical way is to leverage TEE, which is like trusted execution environment. Uh, this is powered by the, uh, the hardware of GPUs. Uh, NVIDIA launched this like, confidential computing module on H100s and E100 GPUs, and it currently have a really good, great performance. It only reduced the like the computation, uh, the performance by only one percent when you do inference. And so we're working with uh, researchers and uh, partners together to solve the privacy problem. Um, so once we finish all these different uh, infrastructure, some have launched like the orchestration layer and uh, inference engine, and some uh, have passed the research stage and are currently being implemented, like the verification layer and privacy layer. Uh, and uh, we're going to launch our blockchain as well. So uh, around the end of this year, we'll probably have the, uh, we'll have the test net of everything. Uh, and that's what we call uh, the first stage of hyperbolic, which is infrastructure stage. And entering next year, we'll have the second stage, which is uh, applications and economy stage. So at that time, uh, there, there will be many new AI applications that cannot be created in Web2, but can create it on Hyperbolic. So for example, uh, starting from GPU, uh, someone, uh, some projects can easily tokenize the future usage and current usage of GPUs, and uh, people can start buying that. And then maybe some DeFi developers can also build a GPU future exchange and spot exchange. So as a trader, now if I think the GPU provides a price of H100 will be $2 uh, in November, but currently on the future exchange, uh, they only cost me $1.5 uh, to use uh, to buy the November shares, then I will, currently, I will definitely buy it uh, to kind of uh, do this speculation. Uh, it's also good for uh, the GPU providers because as the GPU providers, now I, as uh, once I support a provider machine to our network, I already can uh, get monetize the future usage of the GPUs, and that gives me higher liquidity, more capital, to bring more compute to our network. Um, and on the AI side, uh, a lot of people are talking about AI model, revenue sharing, or like user-only AI, which is the near uh, thesis. Uh, I think this is also can be powered by hyperbolic, uh, because uh, someone can easily tokenize an AI models, and as a developer, now I no longer need to spend a lot of time talking to different investors, trying to raise uh, millions of dollars to get enough capital and compute to train an AI model. But instead, I can just uh, have this proposal, I can launch these tokens, and I can invite the community to contribute to my idea. Right? Some can provide GPU resources, some can provide capital, some can provide data. And once I actually finish the AI model, I can host it on Hyperbolic's inference service. Uh, our our inference service will be compatible with the token standard, and all the revenue that come into uh, the AI model can be redistributed back to the different token holders and contributors. And so we currently, uh, we just announced a partnership with Black Forest Lab, which is like a, one of the strongest uh, image generation uh, labs that they build a flux, which is the state of state of the art AI image generation model. Uh, they're ex exploring the revenue sharing idea with them. Uh, so every income that goes into our inference engine uh, for that specific model will be uh, will share the revenue with them. And I think this is how we can actually build an open collaborative AI community without just taking everything for free. Uh, and uh, the last stage that we envision will be uh, hyper-intelligent state, state, because we think uh, in the future, HUI won't be just be a single monolithic giant AI model. It will actually be modular. So we'll have a huge AI agents network, such that different AI agent is capable of solving different uh, questions in different domains. Like some are good at math, some are good at reasoning, some are good at legal, some are good at medical. And then uh, every time when the user send a request, our network will route the request to the agents that are capable of solving this different uh, this question. And then these agents will collaborate together and uh, try to provide a better answer compared to just one single generalized AI model. Uh, uh, so as AI developers, I now I can use hyperbolic compute to train the AI model that I want, and then I can host it on hyperbolic AI inference engine. And by having this uh, economy element come into play, uh, I can actually own the uh, revenue that belongs to myself.
and uh, I, I, I know this probably sounds a little bit science uh, fiction right now, but maybe in uh, five years, uh, we'll, become, we'll start seeing this uh, becoming true. And the last page is like the ecosystem map. Uh, we know that by, uh, in order to build this open AI ecosystem economy, there's no chance that Hyperbolic can build it by ourselves. So we're trying to uh, partner with all these like uh, great partners, both in Web2 and Web3. Some are from universities, some are from uh, AI research labs, uh, some are like uh, real AI, uh, Web3 AI applications builders, and uh, we also have compute players and uh, like uh, training service, uh, recycling protocol, etc. together. And we think the future of AI is collaborative. So we want to partner with everyone, uh, join us, and together we can build a bright future. Thank you. Okay, so I just wonder uh, your final version of uh, hyperbolic ecosystem, also your final version of uh, your sound uh, AI or decentralized AI. Yeah, so I think uh, just like what I said, we, we, uh, the ultimate vision of hyperbolic is uh, we try to build the open AI ecosystem and economy of the people, by the people, for the people. And what does it mean? It means that uh, if you are you have a lot of data, then you are able to contribute your data to the ecosystem so that other people can use it. And you can own the data, and you can share the revenue that comes into this data. And the same for compute. If you have compute, right now probably you can just only monetize that based on the current market price. But what if you can actually contribute to the development of an AI model, and you can share that ownership, a partial ownership of the AI model. And I think this is how we can out compete, uh, if we can compete with centralized AI companies, because right now, like all these different centralized companies, they have hundreds of thousands of GPUs. Um, by individuals, there's no way that you can, by ourselves, there's no way that we can just uh, have the enough compute and enough data to win the game. But uh, actually, Ethereum, when it was like uh, the proof of uh, work stage, it actually have 20 times more compute than just uh, OpenAI. And if we can actually build this collective um, community that everyone can contribute what they have, uh, there's a chance. And I think we're well, very confident that in the future, we can actually build uh, comparable AI models that have the same performance or even better performance compared to centralized AI models. You, you mentioned about uh, kind of encouraging the ecosystem to kind of build together. Um, I think, um, as we're seeing, like there are lots of crowded elements in, in these layers. So from your lens, what, what should people be building? And uh, how can we complement the existing compute layers and aggregation layers that already exist? So yeah, so there are like many different layers in the AI ecosystem. So like uh, infrastructure-wise, you can build GPU network, you can build AI services like AI inference service, AI training service, AI fine-tuning service. Sarah, and then there are also people building like data layer, so data labeling, like you can help label data, or like data cleaning, data uh, storage, etc. And uh, so it depends on expertise. If you like, you are a very, uh, you are you are an engineer that is very deep in infrastructure, then I think deep building infrastructure is a good place for you. Uh, but if you are more like an AI developers who want who want to build like open source AI model, then you can leverage this uh, infrastructure and you can issue tokens and you can like try to build this proposal, allow people to contribute all these resources to you, and you can build this like state-of-the-art AI model. And as a and as a normal people, then maybe you can compute, uh, everyone has individual, uh, their personal compute, so they can easily join our network to provide compute. Uh, they can also participate in those like data labeling uh, event, uh, campaign, or like they can also try to provide human feedback to AI models. And those are also very important, um, and that can also help the development of open source AI.